So I'm aiming for this one to be just a little bit shorter, which I'm inevitably gonna fail, but let's try and make this one quick, shall we? In fact, look, there's even a timer set to a predetermined time, counting down to zero. Assuming I can actually figure out how to make a timer show up anyway. But anyway, we don't have much time. In fact, we have exactly as long as it says there on the timer, and while recording this, I definitely know how long that is, and I'm not gonna edit around this to sync it up later at all. I'm Jack Fitzpatrick, and this is my review of Beauty and the Beast. So, Beauty and the Beast tells the story of, well, Beauty and the Beast. I mean, come on, do I really have to explain Beauty and the Beast to you? You know, a guy gets turned into a beast, a girl falls in love with him, and then other plot-related things happen. You know this, you've seen the original, maybe. So, let me just straight up tell you right now that I actually quite like this. In fact, maybe I even loved it. The music was of course real catchy and all the songs had this happy sort of tone to it all. The characters were all reminiscent of their original versions and overall the film just really captured the magical sort of feeling that the cartoon is so well known for. The movie itself even felt like half a cartoon some of the time with its many comedic visual gags, its simplistic story and the abundant uses of music. This film proved to be telling a story that wouldn't really be able to be told any other way. This is a very loyal adaption while still leaving itself enough wriggle room for originality and differences here and there. For instance, one of the biggest differences, one which sparked a bit of controversy upon announcement, was this version of Le Fowl. Is that how you say his name? Who knows? And for those of you who don't know, that is Gaston's sidekick. But, you know, that's obvious. Everyone, everyone knows that, right? It, it's not like I had to Google that just now, what his name was. No, nope. but anyway, uh, this version of the character is actually gay, and when this was announced, some people were very against this, and some people were very for it. I myself just thought it was like an exaggeration. I didn't really care. I thought it was only a side character, so it didn't really matter, and I imagined it wouldn't play a very big part in the movie anyway. But uh, I think I was actually wrong, because after actually having seen the film, this guy was actually easily one of my favorite characters. He brought some great comic relief to the film, but never fear, the butt of the joke was never on his homosexuality. But he also had a bit of an interesting moral story, and of course he was portrayed with an impressive abundance of energy by Josh Gad. The fact that he was gay was also utilized briefly, but honestly, it didn't really affect the main story in any real way. But yeah, I found this character to actually be pretty great. Well, shit, I wasted a whole lot of time talking about that character, so just real quick, let me run through the others. Gaston was another major highlight. He was played humorously, charmingly, and of course antagonistically by Luke Evans in a very memorable role. Belle was perfectly fine, a bit flat of a character, but that's sort of the character. Though I did find her to be relatable, which is good. Oh, and also the Beast, kind of an important character. He was played by some guy named Dan Stevens, and he was actually pretty damn effective. He was intimidating when need be, he was sympathetic when need be, and and he was a little bit more fleshed out this time round too, in comparison to the original. Also, the animation behind the character, in my opinion, was totally up to snuff, and though at times it did look the slightest bit funny when Emma Watson would be speaking to an obviously animated figure, for the most part it worked and I totally bought into their endearing relationship. The live action approach also allowed for some more realistic portrayals of some of the settings and costumes, stuff like that, which I also found to be something to appreciate. The castle looked suitably spooky but kind of pretty, the woods set around the castle came off as dark and threatening, and the main village where Belle is from felt accurately depicted amongst the Disney cartoon. But something else that I feel like I have to talk about are some of my inherent problems with Beauty and the Beast the original. And I have to say that this movie didn't really fix up some things like this which I was kind of expecting it to. These sorts of little problems that I have work well enough in the cartoon but in a live action version they become a little bit worse. Like for instance the Beast totally comes off as a whiny teenager throughout the entire thing and though it's arguable that he's meant to it's still just a little bit funny I can't quite take it super seriously at times. Or the fact that the story behind how the Beast got cursed is super rushed just like in the original and it's it's totally unfair and a little bit illogical why he gets turned into the beast. But my main sort of inherent problem with Beauty and the Beast in general is the fact that it deals heavily with the concept of Stockholm Syndrome and a few weird themes like that. Like it kind of lingers on bestiality and stuff. This stuff just feels like a little bit weird to me and it's just that much more noticeable in a live action version. But hey, props to the film for keeping it faithful. In the end, I'd say that Beauty and the Beast wasn't exactly necessary, but I ended up being really happy with it. It was full of impressive production production design had a very energetic feeling to it all, and in the end, I had all those damn songs stuck in my head days after seeing it. The movie was also quite funny, with many little character moments giving them a little more personality, but it was also quite serious when it needed to be too. The story developed just a little bit more naturalistically than in the original, and I'd say that that's probably thanks to the slightly longer runtime
time, allowing the film to focus on a few more details and make some additional changes here and there to suit the film. And the movie was also just a whole lot of fun too. That That's important as well. I would rate Beauty and the Beast a 9 out of 10. Yep, that, that's all.